Welcome, I'm Janelle Kolaski, a career mindset coach and actor. And I'm Amanda Dubois, a self-authenticity and prosperity life coach and actor as well. And we're your co-host of Mindset Artistry YouTube channel, where we teach you the art of discovering and using your mindset to, to build, build a career, career and life you desire. Really, really excited about this episode today. So welcome back to Mindset Artistry. And we have a bit of a superstar here I call uh, Jen Jacob. Yes, 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 yes. I had the pleasure of meeting her at Scott Freeman's studio. What was it? A Freeman event on a Friday. And she came in and she had such an essence and glow about her that was so grounded and so authentic that I was like, oh, I got to, I have to get to know her and the information that you were providing about self-taping, which we'll talk about. Um, so I was like, she has to be on the podcast. And so Jen Jacob has had a four episode, four episode arc, y'all, on Law and Order Organized Crime. She did Blue Bloods. I, I'm calling her the the voice of New York because she's given me the New York accent in all these episodes and girls. Yeah, you're girl, yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got the Bronx in me, darling. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, you did girls as well. And now you have an upcoming one woman show called Four. So let's just dive in to your journey and advice for those creative and actors out there and anything that you want to share. But I'm going to jump right into Law and Order Organized Crime because <laughs> full circle, Law and Order has been on for decades at this point now and they had the spinoff. What was that journey like from getting that audition to actually filming four episodes and really being able to expand this character compared to like a day player sure uh, yeah i mean um from the audition what that was kind of one of my uh auditions that i'm i'm proud of because i that was a moment that i sent something in when it was due the night before and um first of all sorry thank you for having me this podcast is so amazing and you have such incredibly inspiring people on and you two are so inspiring so uh should have jumped in first with that but um yeah, I, I sent in, you know, a tape uh, for that for that part. And um, I sent it in super late at night. My managers didn't even have time to get back to me about it. It was due the very next day. And I woke up at like five in the morning with this sort of knowing that it wasn't quite there, that it wasn't good enough. And I have the most amazing mother in the whole world. And I called her at 7 a.m. And I was like, can you read for me like really quick? It's going to be so fast. And she was my reader for the, the tape that actually got sent in. And we, I did it really quick. I just had like a couple of changes I wanted to make to it. And then to book it off of something that I put that extra mile into, I think um, it goes a long way to say that if your gut is like, mm, it could be better, do it. Take it, take your, take your gut up on yourself. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And what was it like filming, you know, those and preparing for that four episodes of a show and then being able to live with this character for quite a bit? Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was the first time that I had had not just it wasn't my first recur, but it was my first recur that was was much more meaty and, and really like personally led the story along. And I was acting along powerhouses, Chris Maloney and Dennis Leary and um definitely walked into it nervous and like, do I even belong here? Can I do this? And just so quickly, I mean, first of all, the generosity of both of those men on set, they're just incredible human beings and they make you feel amazing. And I have so many stories about how just incredible they are, but just reminding myself, even in the moment of like, actually, I deserve to be here and I can do this. And uh, the nerves are only getting in the way and don't waste this opportunity to, to show everybody what I got. And what's cool about that part too, is it was originally cast as, um, as a possible recur. They weren't really sure where it was going. And I was lucky that the first episode I shot, um, was with, uh, John Polson directing, who is also one of the executive producers of the show. And I just kind of got in there and I started doing my thing and I'm kind of an improviser and I started improvising some stuff on set and he really responded to it. So he was like, let's get her back. So um, I think I kind of helped create an opening for me to have the writers kind of bounce off some ideas with me and, uh, and take this character into a bigger direction. And so it was eye opening for me because I didn't even really know how collaborative network television can be sometimes. And it really can, I mean, at least in that experience, everyone was really great about listening to my ideas. And um, obviously that's not the case with every set, but 
it was with that one. So it was really amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Jen. And I know that's going to encourage so many of our listeners because I think, unfortunately, many actors, and I've been there a hundred times where fear comes up and you just want to do it right. Yeah. Or if you haven't been on set a lot, maybe or you are afraid to take those chances. And I wanted to go back to what you said in the beginning about your gut. And I would yeah. love if you could share more with people that are listening, the gut, which I equate to intuition versus fear, because doing a take a hundred times out of fear of it being perfect and right and the right way to get the job versus like, you know what, I got something else in there because that's really what seems to stump actors and their self tapes is just the fear, right? So I'd love if you could tell yeah. us more about that. Yeah, I've I've recently <laughs> been working as a coach with acting with auditions and I, I help with my friends with their own tapes so often. So I've seen and I've experienced myself when someone is just redoing out of fear and it ends up to me what that looks like is the takes look exactly the same over and over and over and over again. Sure, a word gets perfected here, a flub gets perfected there, a smile looks a little bit better in one than the other. Sure. But ultimately, all the intentions, all the objectives, everything that you've planned out is the same. And so those moments for me are kind of when you say like, okay, stop, everything, you're not doing anything different, you know, and, and there is no perfect. So what are we getting to? For me, I think the first time I taped it, I did it, to be honest, I did it without an accent. I did it um, from more of like exactly the way it was written, exactly the way the, the description was written and I slept on it and I I think I it, it came out of I had just shot Blue Bloods like a few months before and in that uh, show I had an accent it was written that way that she was this girl from Bensonhurst and I had this realization I think overnight that this girl is grittier than I originally thought she is she's married to a like my storyline on that show is that I'm married Dennis Leary is like this bad cop undercover as a good cop. And she's wrapped up in that world. And I think I didn't go deep enough. I didn't have the stakes high enough to uh, really be at the heart of who she was, who this girl would be married to someone like that. And so when I retaped it, I had new choices, new character, new voice, new everything. And so um, could I have booked it the first time around? Maybe. But I think it was really knowing what giving them something so specific got them to go like, oh, yeah, that's her. You know, love that because again, as actors, we fear or we think about and try to anticipate what the ca uh, casting directors want, what the producers want from this particular character or the story. So we're going to give them exactly what they think we think they want. And then mm -hmm. we kind of lose sight of what this character is supposed to be or what we can create and contribute to the character. So I love the fact that you talked about that. And I hope everyone takes that to, to heart to be bold enough to create these characters from truth or from your own experiences. And because that's what art, art is, is storytelling and being bold in those choices. And they can always tell you to step it down, bring it down, take it back, okay. right? They can always redirect you. But if you're gonna give them those bold choices, they go, oh, this is an actor. This is a performer. Yeah. This is someone that's gonna be on set that can go head to head with Christopher Maloney and Dennis Leary who have been in the industry for decades. Right. Right. I think um, one of my favorite notes an acting teacher ever gave me, and I think about it all the time when I tape, is have an opinion about everything. So mm -hmm. that feeds into your stakes, that feeds into the circumstance, that feeds into relationship. But like, if you get to a line and you don't have an opinion, we're judgmental. Like human beings are so judgmental. We have an opinion about everything. And to create a person instead of just a face who's saying words you have to have your brain, your internal monologue going at all times. So I think, um, yeah, like even as the actor, have an opinion about who this person is and what they want and how they are in the world. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's incredible. And then, so I kind of want to circle back now because that's just so exciting. I could dive deeper into that, but I definitely <laughs> want to circle back to how your journey came about of when you first started to be, you know, be an actor and choose this industry to mm -hmm. then booking these, you know, Blue Bloods and, and the four episode arc, like what was your journey? And did you always know and have the confidence that this was the all be all it career for you? Well, I wanted to be an actor since I was a very little child. I have a very standard kind of cliche story 
like so many of us that I walked out of the womb wanting to be in front of a camera. <laughs> um, and that really stemmed for me. I, I had a really hard time sleeping as a kid. And my dad w loved movies and he actually went to school to be a director himself and never ultimately went into it. And um, when I couldn't sleep, we would sit at, together and just through the night watch old musicals. So that was like my first, I know it's very sweet. I, my first kind of like intro into the film world and the musical world was really where my love started. And um, it brought me through, you know, high school and standard theater programs and regional theater and community theater and camp theater and all of those things. And then I went to NYU and I studied at Stella Adler uh, for the four years when I was at NYU Tisch. Um, and then I've been through so many different studios and classes after school. Um, I was really lucky that out of my senior year showcase at NYU, I got signed to an amazing manager who um, just really knew the business and was very well connected and put me through truly a boot camp. The first summer I signed with her, it was the summer after school. She, and this was before self taping was even really as big as it is now. Um, she would literally send me fake auditions almost every day and get me to tape, 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 tape. And she'd give me notes and I thought have to retape. It was grueling, a grueling process, but I owe her, um, my work ethic, to be honest. Uh, she really matured me in like a summer. And where my auditioning kind of started when I first started getting kind of any type of notoriety in the industry or any type of attention in the industry is I started improvising in my tapes in a way that I don't know that anybody else or many people really were. And I auditioned for a network uh, lead on a pilot that um, ultimately this improv tape that I did in trying to just find my way into the character got sent up the ranks through NBC and up to producers and um, some really important people at the industry saw it and got back to my manager like, what is this? This isn't acting. She's, can she do the lines? Like, what have I even watching? And uh, that sort of sent me on this journey for a number of years of being really insecure with my work and like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm supposed to do it one way, but I want to do it this way. And I actually don't know anything. And so for years, I sort of lost myself in this process of like, what do they want? And I have to do exactly what they say. And um, I really went down kind of a dark path. There was years I didn't book. I left that manager. I went to a different one who didn't have all the same connections and I wasn't getting as much in the room. Um, and I almost left the business. And then I found uh, the current team that I have right before the pandemic, thank God. <laughs> and they really kind of breathed some new life into me. And I started marrying the two. I found a way to uh, approach the work without the arrogance of like, I'm going to do whatever I want and really look for what the, the writer wrote, but still have a way of finding the fun that I was missing of years ago that I had found in those improv tapes. So um, very long winded way of saying that's kind of where I've arrived at with my auditions. Hi. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's yeah. Well, I was just going to say like, I appreciate you sharing that. And I almost gave up nine and a half years ago on the everything, even though like, I don't know, I started what, 16 years ago. What gave you the courage to be like, no, I, one more time. Like I always think of a Christmas story and how the kids yeah. coming back up the slide, like I want to be because, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what was it that you were like, no, I'm not gonna, I still want this. So I, I know there's work for me and I'm going to keep going. I think, um, I think I was slowly losing confidence when I was with this sort of first manager, when I was given the second, I was given this sort of like slap to the wrist of like, this isn't how you're supposed to do things was when the rug sort of got, the rug of my confidence got pulled out from under me. It was the first time I really got eyed open to like how big this industry is, how much money is at stake here, how little I am <laughs> in the, in the grand scheme of things. And then over the next few years, when I was with the next manager, I sort of got the opposite. I got the most supportive environment. She was the yummiest, loving, wonderful, supportive person, but I just wasn't getting work. And so I started thinking, you know, maybe this just really isn't right for me. I, I just, I gave it a good try. You know, it's been a few years out of college and I, um, I left her on, I left that manager on a Friday, literally had the conversation with her. Like, I need to take a break from the industry. I'm going to kind of rethink things and took the weekend. 
And I have incredibly supportive family and friends, as I hope we all do. And specifically, my husband was a real drive and being like, maybe it just wasn't a right fit. You're going to let one relationship be the reason you throw all of this away, you know? So that Monday I woke up and I kind of was in this like, yeah, like I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it myself. And I did, I started sending literally emails, like blind emails to every single agent and manager I could, I could think of. And by the Friday morning of that week, and I know this story is going to be triggering for most because this is crazy what happened to me. But the Friday of that week, so I was like started emailing Monday, Friday morning, I said, you know what? Why am I not emailing my dream manager? Why am I just emailing these people that I think maybe will say yes to me? And so I just sort of said F it and emailed a manager at Authentic, which Authentic had always been my dream management team to be with, that I knew represented someone I, not even a friend, just someone I had been on set once with in a commercial and she spoke so highly of him and he represented some people that I thought were great. And I emailed him and I, no sales pitch, just sort of like, I'm looking for a new team. Here's some things that I've done. And I included some self tapes because I said, this is the best example of my work. It's the best example of what it's going to be like to work with me every day. My real, I want to grow it. It doesn't show what I can do. And within an hour, he emailed me back and said, I know this is crazy, but I'm leaving for LA tomorrow. Do you want to meet for coffee today? I said, yes. I like canceled everything. I met for coffee. We had this great meeting. And at the end, he said, do you have any questions? And I said, actually, I have a request. And he was like, okay. And I said, just send me a fake audition. It doesn't have to be real. Let me show you what it looks like to work with me. And let me show you what I can do. And he sent me three tapes on that Friday night. I taped all of them over the weekend, got them back on Monday morning. And one of them happened to be a real audition, like something that was casting in that moment. He sent it in. I got a call back. And so it was like, okay, clearly we should work together. And sort of the rest is history. All of that to say, everyone is so scared to blind email people in this industry. Managers and agents are people too. They got into this industry to develop talent. And sometimes they forget that. And it's like actually our job to remind them, you know? And so like, don't be scared. You might not have been been for real because that takes such gravitas and, and the commitment because Mm -hmm. we've had many people on this podcast and we've talked to a lot of people. It's like, you have to be the first yes. And if you can't give yourself the yes, then you cannot expect anyone else to give you a yes too. And so you said yes to yourself, even though you've doubted in between and maybe not even doubted, just questioned it a bit. You said yes, regardless, and you remembered why, because you were that little child that was that came out the womb going, I'm going to be an actor. Like, that, that was you. You were born to be that. And yeah. just, just, just say yes to yourself. And, and I love that because kind of had a similar journey. I mean, not similar, but like, I remember being so excited in like 2017, I was getting ready to leave my job. And then I come to find out my manager at, um, at the time was leaving the industry and was dropping me heartbroken. I had just committed to leaving my job, my nine to five. I said, I'm going to give this my full attention. And she was like, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm so sorry. And no one else can take you because they have a full roster. And I just felt heartbroken. I was like, what? Um, And I already quit my job. So what am I going to do? And it just so happened, like maybe like a week or so prior, my current manager reached out to my agent to talk to me about signing with me or at least with me. and I was like she was like yeah I, I met this person I mean they emailed me I'm I think you should meet them and I was like okay like I was at that point I was just like oh, me anyone at this point because I'm just like so I'm like heartbroken and we met similar we we talked on the phone and then we had coffee and I was like oh yeah this is this is it this is it it was like yeah let's do this and it was just kind of synchronicity and timing and everything so it's like trust the process as well, even through the failures, or if you call them failures, but the hiccups, the the, the falls, the closed doors, because there are freaking buildings that are opening for you. Totally. And, and, right. And, um, and I, I just love that you were bold enough. So, and like you said, and we say this all the time, and we've had casting directors on here is don't be afraid to email them, put your materials together, send it out, find ways to connect. Now we have social media, put some work on there and tag them in it or whatever. (laughs) There's so many things to do. And and I love that. And so 
how has that so because I met you through the self taping and you were doing an amazing workshop and you said you're now coaching at uh, what like because I know you said you work with other people as well and stuff and she helped me with my self tape again she's amazing <laughs> anyone who needs it oh seriously I yeah she just did incredible and I'll talk about that in a minute but what was that process again another process for you about like teaching others about the self-taping and then going, you know what, I think I could do this and like coach other people and lift them up and make their, you know, just m not make them, but bring the best out of them in their work. I mean, it, it's, to be honest, it's a very new thing for me. So it's still very much in process. I got connected. So I, I am a member of the Freeman studio, which is where that self-tape workshop happened. Yes. I take classes with Scott Freeman. I have been taking classes with, with Scott for a decade. I adore him, adore the studio. If you don't know about it, go look it up. It's like hands down the best acting studio in the city. Um, he randomly, separate of me, has a relationship with one of my managers. They met for coffee. He brought to my manager Corey's attention that he was looking to do a self tape workshop and he was hoping to potentially bring in maybe a coach slash actor and a manager together to show both perspectives of approaching a self tape. And Corey, my manager was like, you should have Jen do it. Cause her self tapes are like, are, are really great. So that's how that workshop came about. I never thought about coaching myself. I never thought about getting into teaching. Um, I'd agreed to do this workshop and sort of out of the workshop have had a lot of people who attended the workshop being like, can you private coach me on this audition? And, you know, I think uh, we all as actors help each our friends tape. I mean, that's so much, it's like part of the job. So I, I think in hindsight, we're all kind of coaches because we all are watching the process. And when it's not your audition and you're not so attached to it, it's so much easier to be like, okay, you forgot the stakes, you know, or uh, what you doing over there. <laughs> so I think a lot of it is just like remembering that you know how to do this and being a good um, mirror to the person that you're helping to say like, you got another one in you and here's why, you know, but, um, but I've been really loving it. I think it, 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 it's actually been making my acting better because I'm remembering and sort of putting vocabulary to some of the stuff that I've just been doing in my head and sort of not realizing like, oh yeah, I'm doing that because it drives the scene forward or I'm, I am thinking about trigger words and I am thinking about stakes. You know, it's like, it's reminding me about my acting too, which is great. Incredible. What is some, like some top, like five things you've noticed that have elevated your self taping game that you want to share with anyone who's listening? I think the number one, and I shared this a lot in the workshop is that it's not self taping, it's acting. And so I think for me, the big transition was like, okay, but this is a self tape and I have to do it a certain way. And I have to look over here and I, I have to set up my people and I'm in my room and nobody's here to act with me. And, you know, I'm not supposed to use props and I have to stand in this spot. And I, it just takes all the creativity out of it. It takes all the fun out of it. You're just like doing, it's just not acting anymore. It's like, that's not what we wanted to do. And most of our job is auditioning. So it's about finding why we love this and placing it as much as we can in the audition. So I think the biggest tip that I can give is kind of a shift that I've made, even in the last year, is instead of approaching my audition and getting right to self-taping, like I've memorized my lines, I've rehearsed it on my own, and then I email a friend or text a friend like, hey, can you be my reader for 10 minutes at three o'clock on Tuesday? I need a little rehearsal time. I always do. And so instead, what I've been doing is, hey, I have this audition. I'm going to tape it on Tuesday. I really need about a half an hour of rehearsal. Can you give that time to me? And can we just rehearse it? And I FaceTime my friend, put the camera aside, and I'm just making eye contact. We're doing the scene together. And then I say, great, for the last 10 minutes, I'm going to put you on my computer and I'm going to self-tape it. And then I'm only doing it once or twice. I don't need to do it so many times because we've rehearsed it. And I think it just, to me, that is the best tip I can give is, rehearse the scene like it's a scene for class, 
for something you're about to shoot because it's a scene, <laughs> you know? Um, and it's not just about your words. It's about the listening. It's about the relationship, the stakes, the objectives, like all the basics of acting we always forget. Of but also just before <laughs> I you, know, I, I want to say thank you. Awesome. No, it's okay. No, but I was about to say Amanda helped me so much because remember that audition? There was a procedural and then like I knew I could handle it, but I was feeling some type of way. And then Amanda's so wonderful because we kept running it a hundred times. And it's great. I was a dancer first. So like, I kind of get this weird, like, again, 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 not in a mm. negative way, in a rehearsing way. And then Amanda was doing that. And I was like, I don't want to do it again. I don't want it. <laughs> but it helped so much. Get out of her head because she was like she my head. in her head and not living in the story and the emotion and the connection. Yeah, when I like, taped it, it helped. It was just there. Yeah. And it was like 14 pages. It was really intimidating because it was just a whole different thing. And anyway. Thanks for the reminder, Jay. Hey, Amanda. Sorry. Amanda, as you were saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. You know, hey, I like that. Um, no, <laughs> what I was saying is, well, Jen actually recently helped me because out of the blue, within two days, I got like three auditions and I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, great. And there were multiple pages for each of those auditions. And, and a few were in uh, via Zoom and then a few were self-taping, self-taped. And I was like, all right, I kind of felt a little disconnected and a bit rote with my self taping. And I remember it in your class that you were just talking about, you know, backdrops and, and just the simplistic things that we tend to forget that we overthink what we tend to forget. And I was like, all right, let me get back to the basics of my toolbox and, and just work on it. And so I sent it to Jen and I knew it was still like a practice and it was like still my rehearsal aspect. It wasn't like, I know that I knew it was done when I sent it to her. She hit everything that I already knew about that just didn't do. And I was like, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I ignored that. Oh, yes, but that was great. And so I just find it so important to have a community mm -hmm. of other actors, even if they're at a level where you want to be and if they're willing to share, because some people are just way too busy and that's fine, is don't be afraid to share your art because at the same time, you are also the audience member for your colleagues and your friends. You will eventually be in the audience members watching your friends, rooting them on oh. and really believing them in, in these stories. And so I thank you for that because you elevated it and I felt way more grounded because I also felt like, oh, I was seen as an actor in my self tape. And I just, I, like you said, I wasn't criticized. Like that's not the way to do it. It was more of like, well, let me just give you some healthy feedback here. Love it. You're in a great place. Let's just bring it up about 10, 20 notches. This is what, you know, and I, and I just love that. I appreciate that you did that. How has building a community helped you in this career as an actor? Because, you know, like you said, the fear comes up, maybe anxiety and the mindset just kind of gets lost in the business or maybe I'm too small. I'm a small cog in the machine. What does that look like? So my question is, how have you, how has community served you and was it difficult to find in this industry? Well, I first want to also go back to your audition for one second. Cause I think the, the ingredient you're missing is what was so special. What is so special is being able to receive it too. So I think that Yes, I hopefully delivered it in a way that wasn't like, you should have done that or, or because it was, it, you're great. So it already is great. And I think, but be, coming from a place when you are an actor, to me, it's always can get better. Always can get better. And I even said when, before we did the workshop, I said to my manager who did it with me, I was like, well, what if the tape comes in and it's like amazing? And then we have no notes to say, because we, we did a thing where we'd have people tape and we gave feedback. And he was like, oh, I can always give feedback. <laughs> and I think because the point is, it is a craft that is always evolving. It can always change. It can always be different. It can always get deeper. It can always, there's no perfect. There's no right. So having an opinion is just an opinion. And you can stand up for your perspective versus somebody else's. But I think being able to come from a place of like, oh, I can always get it better. It can always be better. Is a really smart actor place to be. And that was part of what was so great to even give you notes is that you were like, yes. And then you adjusted and you really adjusted and your tape was, was already good, but it just went to this next level of like, all right, now I really see the relationship. I really see this girl. Um, community. Uh, I think community is so important. We are in a career that is so 
ridiculous. <laughs> we are constantly job hunting. We are constantly struggling. We're constantly being faced with dealing with our own insecurities and our deepest, darkest demons. Like if you don't have people in your life that you can call and be like, oh, just talk to me about this or send a self tape to say like, all right, tell me, just tell me, I trust you. What do you see? That it, it's invaluable. Everyone needs it. Um, the best place to find it is get in class, get in class, whether it is in the Freeman studio or there are tons of studios around the city that, um, that, you know, you take a scene study class here, you take a scene study class there and you find your people that your people are part of your tool toolbox. Like, yes, you're, you're milking in all of the ingredients from each teacher and what works and you're making sure it sticks. But I have my best actor friends. I have like four girls that are truly become my best friends that are from the Freeman studio. I have a friend that I did a play once with who's become one of my best friends that I brought into the Freeman studio. I just all the different walks of life that you bring into your world. And, um, you know, I have friends who host reading nights where they read from plays just to like be creative or do, you know, um, like let's get together and just watch each other's tapes from the week because life is hard and these will never get seen, <laughs> you know, or we, I have my group of friends once, uh, I don't know if it, it never actually happened, but we're still planning it like a film, a film screening night of like our indies that nobody saw, you know, <laughs> and didn't. So those kinds of things that where this industry feels so isolating and so hard to celebrate, um, finding your people to help you do that is so important warms my yes. heart because i'm like it's so sweet. No. That is, i'm like i didn't think about that like screening our self tapes and sharing that with our friends and and just getting the feedback and go girl you did great and the, i just i love all that you shared and i hope anyone who feels is connected is like you can find your community you can build your community and there's so many different ways to be creative because as as actors and even just as creatives we need outlets to create outside of being on set and how are you going yeah. to give to your art if you're not living, if you're not experiencing different things, if you're not communicating and talking about it and yeah. also being, like you said, willing to learn? Because, yeah. I mean, I know people can say cruel things. I've had someone, a casting director years ago, say that I was never going to make it. And she was an absolute mean person and made me cry. Mm -hmm. Insane. It literally, I was like, hold it together, man, don't cry. And, but I, you know, I didn't let that stop me because I also had a community that was like, what do you, she don't know what she's talking about. Like, keep going. That's, or if not, then if you feel like you need work or need help, get better. That's all. Just get better mm -hmm. then. So they, yeah. you're giving yourself the yes. And then they can't say no because you're that good. Yeah. And that, you know, that bold, but go ahead, Janelle, you were going to say something. So I got so excited about that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And it's beautiful. And then you also learn things that you don't know. Like you only know what you know. And I was grateful that I had my friend Farron. He taught me so much about self-taping. Like you want to talk about using props and I was so scared. I didn't know what was allowed. Um, I mean, I want to know a lot more about your one woman show, the play. I want to hear about this. And then even before you get into that, I would love just another thing about self-taping. Like how can people improv the part of themselves that is so unique? Like what I've been in work that it into the character beyond making choices, because I know that's my best work and the way that I do it is very quirky. And then I used to be afraid of that because I was like, I look like drama. That's what people tell me. I shouldn't do comedy. Comedy. I look dramatic. <laughs> and I wasn't booking because I wasn't I bringing I don't that's know. Crazy. We're all in this crazy. It doesn't, I, was like, I can't be fine. I don't understand. But I finally brought like, like brought not necessarily improv, but kind of like a little bit more of a quirky flair, even into some drama within reason. And that's why I started booking. So any advice you have, um, like a more clear cut way of doing that for each person. And then please tell us about the play and the one woman show. <laughs> okay. So improv is, it, it is one of my favorite things to talk about because I, I think um, people do get so scared to do it. And so far, everything I've booked has, has come off of improvising. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I, I booked Blue Bloods because, I mean, I don't know if it's because, but in my Blue Bloods audition, I improvised a couple of things that ultimately got written in. And uh, the director was on the call and was like, is this girl for real? Like, I literally remember the director of that episode was Bridget Moynihan. And she was like, who is this girl? Um, and we ended up and it was like sort of the line that like everyone, anytime anybody remembers that scene from from the if they're a fan of the show and they see me or whatever, they realize who I am. They say that line. I'm like, yes, you know, so I think that 
as long as it's coming rooted in truth for the character. I used to, I think where my issue was when I was younger and I was kind of like being told not to do it is I was doing it for the sake of showing me and improvising for me and showing you how smart I was and how funny I was and how different I was. And like, that's, nobody wants that. Nobody needs that. You don't need that. It's like, that's stuff to work out in therapy. <laughs> but if it's like, you are, uh, my first manager said to me, and it's something I always do remember. If you are in the character, there's no wrong choice. Because if you're, as long as all, the character is there, there isn't a choice that's wrong to make because it's all within the character. So I think it's like, of course, take it with a grain of salt. They wrote a scene. They spent years of their, the writers, like, especially if it's like a film or something, like it's their baby that they've spent years to get off the ground. Like you want to serve what they've written and that's our job. Um, and I think that if within the character, feeding your own creative process and just sort of in the moment, it's not like a planned out thing. If, if something comes up, don't stop yourself. That's sometimes the gold that we're all waiting for. That 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 is when the perfect marriage of of the actor and the writer and the director, like it all comes together. Of like, this is why we don't want AI. That we need a person, you know. Um, and I think that I this is a good story to share, and I feel like it feeds into the improvising thing. I when I was shooting on organized crime. I like, obviously, like we all do, I was a good little actor and I created my whole backstory and my whole person. And Dennis and I were doing a scene that the writers, we kept on feeling like wasn't the, it wasn't, the writer didn't feel like it was getting to the crux of where the story needed to go. And the writer and the director came into the hair and makeup trailer that morning and was like, can we rehearse this? It's, it doesn't feel right. And so we started running our lines and the direct, their director was like, yeah, I just, I just don't know that the stakes are here yet. You know, like I'm not really sure. And the writer wasn't sure. And I just said, well, my character is younger than my husband. And I've painted this whole thing about how, um, you know, I have daddy issues. I grew up with a single mother. My dad left me. Like I gave them my whole backstory. And I said, I would imagine that if, if Dennis's character said to me, something that really like cut to the heart of the fact that I am from a broken family, it would really trigger me to get where I need to go. And I know I'm being a little vague and I hope this is coming across without having been in the room to understand what I'm talking about. But everyone was like, yeah. And the writer wrote it and it came back and it was one line. And yes, that's not an improvised line. It was written, but it came from the same essence of what I'm talking about of like, knowing your character so inside and out that you can say, this makes sense for her to do this. This makes sense for me to say that. This makes sense for me to have this sort of unplanned opinion about what's going on. And I, I think we need to have, as long as you've done your homework, have the confidence that that's why an actor is there and not a computer. You just dropped a great gem because we tend to forget that this is a collaborative industry. This is a collaborative art and so often as actors, we feel like we just, we're there to just kind of be the living mannequin, do what's on the paper, do it how you rehearse it and move on. And I think you just really nailed on the, on the head here of how much, it's not even about control, but, but how much you can contribute to your work, even if it's just that. So you did so much of that character work. And like you said, you gave life to this character and you were able to collaborate and you were able to articulate yourself in a way that was received well by the team and then incorporated. And I think I've heard that so many times of from series regulars, like, you know, someone can sing and then they incorporate that the character can sing or they like, you know, or they're afraid of dogs and they incorporate like all these things, like, because that's real, that's life. Right. And so breathe, breathe life into your work breathe life into the work any way possible and and be bold enough and then also prepare. I think that also the big thing here is like you said, prepare, 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 and then prepare more and then let it go, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And then have fun mm -hmm. and, ha and have fun about that. And I, I, I love that story. And I think maybe not as often as it, it should be shared is that this is a collaborative even industry, even though, you know, there are writers out there who you got to stick to the lines and this is, that's fine. 
But what could you do in between? What kind of action could you do? What, you know, um, or even just practice with your partner if they're willing to do that. So I, I think that's just incredible to share. And it kind of also puts ease in my heart and my mind going, yeah, this is why I did this. This is why I created this. Why? Like, this is why I wanted to be an actor when I, you know, started this industry. And it's because all of this and being be able to talk about it. Um, I love that. So I, I really want to dive in because I could talk about that even more. But I really want to dive into your one woman show that's coming up called Force. Tell me about yeah. where this came from and like how it has been from beginning to now you you start the february 29th am i correct to say that yes you are a good little homeworker <laughs> um yeah well i um i my team this dan brown who wrote force um not the dan brown not the da vinci code dan brown but a very wonderfully talented Dan Brown, nonetheless, um, approached my team during the strike about uh, having me do this. And it was sort of an opportunity that felt like, yeah, this is what I, I'm not doing anything else. And I haven't had an opportunity to be on stage in a really long time. It's where my first love of all of this sort of began. Um, and it just felt like such a challenge. It felt like this is going to really break me in the best way. And I really, again, I'm always looking to grow. I'm always looking to learn. And um, and I just knew that this would be an experience where I would really have to stretch myself. And I haven't had TV roles where like, I really had to dig into some really intense stuff. And this play does that. It's about um, a girl, Sarah Beth, who's my character, um, who experiences uh, an, a random act of sexual assault uh, early on in the show as a teenager. And the rest of the play takes her on this journey post the assault of, of really examining her choices. And um, the main theme that the play looks at is how much of our life is determined by our choices and how much is determined by circumstance and how much does fate play a role in that? Or is it all our choices and all happenstance? So it's, it's a really complicated journey. Um, and uh, it, it is stretching me so completely. And the, and the biggest thing I'm kind of taking away from it and, and sort of to go full circle back into my self-tapes, I've seen my self-tapes make a huge leap again after um, starting this process. And the biggest thing I think that I've gotten from it is even more so having the courage to be incredibly bold in my choices. Um, this girl goes from every possible emotion <laughs> and from eight ages, like truly from eight to 25 ish. So uh, I'm really running the gamut of this girl's history of this girl's experience of who she is, who she becomes. And it's just stretching me. It's just stretching me to all the different crevices of really what it means to be human. And I think it's reminding me every time I get a self tape, how each person is different for me and where to stretch myself into this person and stretch myself into that person. And I think that's, uh, it's just been a really fun um, exercise to be, you know, um, yeah. And, and where are you performing? Where it's happening we? at the Chain Theater on 36th and 9th. Um, it's only one weekend. It's Thursday through Sunday. It's four shows, February 29th, March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Uh, I keep on thinking the second we get to the final show is when I'm going to hit my groove and be like, all right, now I'm ready <laughs> and it will be over. But um, yeah, that's incredible. Did you think that you would, you know, your career would take you not to this point of doing a woman's show and like all the accomplishments along the way? Did you kind of foresee these things or did you just allow it to kind of happen? Because as as human beings, we can overthink things. We can let like it has to the success has to look like, you know, a specific actor who's at their prime or whatever it is. Like, did you think that you would, you know, get to this point and how does it feel? I remember going to a night my friend Michael was in a one person play or one person show writing class and the class culminated in a night at a bar where everybody got up and did a little piece from their thing they were working on. And this was like a year ago. I remember going and just being, oh my God, that's so weird. He just texted me. That is so weird. Wait, I just like have to prove it. Michael, that's so weird. Um, so I remember being at that bar and like listening to all these people get up and him, he, his show is so beautiful. And me just being like, I will never do this. I never want to do that. <laughs> 
and just being like, this all looks really hard and really not what I got into acting to do. And it's like amazing for you, but man, I have no interest <laughs> to just be up on stage for an hour and a half without anybody else. Because what I love about acting is the, is the human relationship that's happening between two people. So it really feels silly that here I am promoting a one person play. So to answer your question, no, I never saw myself doing this. Um, also, when I think of one person plays, I think of things that I would have written about myself. I usually think of things that are funny. This is very dark. This is not my story. It's not about me at all. It's all fiction. Um, but I think that uh, what it's, again, it's given me is like a reminder of how much I love theater, how much I love to be live, how much I love to learn and work on this craft. And and if if I have someone with me bouncing off lines or if it's the wall in the back that I'm creating my partner, whatever it is, uh, it's still acting. It's still what I love to do. So I feel very grateful. Awesome. I am, I'm just like, I'm in awe of you. I think you have such a, a, a sparkle about you when I, you know, when I, and I said that and I was like, oh, there's something really special about this, this performer, this actor. And I was like, I gotta, <laughs> I just have to know her. Um, and, and just thank you for being here. Cause I think you will give something to our audience that they may have not known that they needed, which was the light in this kind of feel that can be overwhelming and unpredictable and so and then but yet you said you found your predictability you found your place in this industry and you've made your place in this industry by your experiences you know you you know we're doing improv overly doing it and now you're like oh well now i can like incorporate it and and really give to my art in a way and then i'm expanding and saying yes to the art and um just thank you for everything that you've contributed to it. And um, if anyone is interested in connecting with you or for coaching and getting tickets, what's the best way to connect with you? Uh, yeah. And find you. I love that. Um, Instagram. I mean, I'm so active on Instagram. My Instagram is jen.jacob. So easy to find, reach out. I just want to say back to you both, because I think so often in this industry, we think like, you know, we, we all have our own goals of where we want to head. And I think it's really rare to celebrate the journey along the way. And this podcast not only is doing that, you guys are both doing that. And I think that I, my husband says this to me a lot, like, I'll be proud of you at the Oscars, of course, I'll be so proud, but I will never be more proud than when I find you crying on the bed because you just, you found out that you got released from a hold of a lead on a show and it's on to the next and you just pick yourself back up. So I think like celebrating these moments of like the before stuff happens is so important and, um, and being kind to yourself that if that's where you're at right now of like either the crying moments or the before moments or the at moments, like just, this is what it's all about. It's all going to be ups and downs the whole time. And thank you for celebrating that. Oh, thank you. I think we need it too. Janelle and I, we, we, this, this came about in the pandemic now, you know, I feel like you've been on mute this whole time. I'm talking too much. Like, <laughs> oh no, 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 we love you. No, no. It's true. We did the pandemic. We were like sending voice memos to each other and videos. And then it was really funny because it would lift the person up, whatever they were going through. And then we'd listen back and I'd be like, I don't know where this came from, but this is good. Like I would need my own advice like a week later. <laughs> so then we were like, we should just do a lives on Instagram. Let's just put it on podcast. Everybody has a podcast. Everybody has a back tattoo. Yeah, everybody has a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's been a privilege. It's been a privilege and getting to meet our peers and that I, any person that I, I meet, I always think it, this is just the beginning of our journey. I know someday, <laughs> somehow, we'll be on set some way, some, or even passing by the red carpet and cheering you. Like, whatever it is, in my mind, the way it works is like, this is not the end of the road. This is just the beginning. And I will see you and I want to see you. Like, I want to see everyone that I meet successfully living the career that they desire and that mm -hmm. they want, not by anybody else's opinion or expectations, and then celebrating that. And, and like I said, because we've had so many, this, journey can be full of no's and lots of rejections. And if you're not tuned in and knowing your voice and being okay with like, I'm a little broken today because I got that no and crying it out. 
and, and then saying yes to yourself through even through all that is it's a beautiful thing. And I, I want everyone to know that there is a community and you have people like Jen who are going to support you and are honest, you know, and sharing their career and sharing their journey. So thank you for sharing your journey as well and, and, and your insight and all that um, you told us today. Is there anything that you want to leave the audience with or something? Hmm. Oh my gosh, putting me on the spot. Um, man, what do I want to leave the audience with? Maybe, you know what? I feel like if you're listening to this and you're a creative person, that I, you've said it so many different ways, that you're not alone, that like whatever you're going through, um, we all see you. We're all, we've all been through versions of it. And, um, and I think what you said at the end just now is, is one of the most beautiful things to hopefully for everybody to take on is like celebrating each other and someone that you know that got a show or that is winning it's like the fact that you know them means you're in the right place too and it's like just celebrate each other we're all lifting each other up along the way and um and i just think like what a much better that's such a better way of going through life than like constantly just like hmm how did she get that? And I should have gotten that, you know, it's like, uh, actually, I'll say this, my, my, one of my best friends from this group of actors, she always says to us, rejection is protection. And it's really true. It's like the rejection over here is because it's protecting you because you were supposed to get that one, or you're not supposed to do this one. I, I got rejected from a, a, a movie that I really, really wanted during the pandemic. And I found out that everybody on set got bed bugs from where they were staying. You know, it's like rejection is protection in the world and it's just all meant to be <laughs> i love that well everyone thank you so much i hope that this has been an impactful episode and i can't wait to see you next time thank you so much for mindset artistry yay thanks for having me guys <laughs> what are your thoughts about this episode drop it in the comments and let us know what you want to dive into next subscribe like share and click the link below to book a free consultation and we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time, time.